Beijing is one of the biggest cities in China. Beijing is the center of China, political center, cultural center, the economic center as well. Beijing is an important regional hub, and its population has exploded. It's also in a very arid zone. In fact, every summer for the last three years, it has experienced more water stress than most cities in Middle Eastern countries. People are using a lot of groundwater resources, and the scarcity is very serious here. Consumption of water by factories, by office buildings, by transportation, by energy sector, all this consumes a lot of water. Min Reservoir is located in the northeast of Beijing, about 80 kilometers from downtown Beijing Tiananmen Square. Minyun basically supplies about 40% of the drinking water to Beijing city. It is one of the largest artificial lake on the earth. Minyun watershed has been facing the problem of degradation, deforestation in the last 20 years. Recently, the government has turned its attention to bolstering water supplies through restoring the land outside of the reservoir. Restoring the forest landscapes will not only increase the water supply, but also help with the water clarity and purity. There are several challenges when you talk about restoring an area like Mian Watershed. You have competing demands of livelihoods of people, needs for development, need to restore and recharge the water supply. Beijing has this distinct challenge now to welcome trees back to former forests. They know how to do this because they have a long experience in restoration. Perhaps the most exciting example of large-scale restoration in China is in the Los Plateau. Los Pato was an area with rich forest resources. In the Ming Dynasty, about 600 years ago, the forest coverage was more than 35%. It was a very beautiful place. But during the past hundreds of years, and the population expanded dramatically. We lost the forests. China has focusing on a national-wide reforestation program in the past 30 years. They put in place a number of incentives for farmers to start growing trees. And those trees became a great green wall that now stands in some places 20 feet tall, four miles. Through the implementation of the first landscape restoration, the forest area has been expanded dramatically. In China, the theory was keep it simple and keep it large, and that was really successful. But now we're seeing new challenges. Now time has come to bring back more native species in the landscape, and improving biodiversity, improving soil quality, water, livelihood benefits. There are challenges and issues which could be addressed through looking at experiences from other countries. The Beijing Forest Forum is an international event focused on forestry best practices in China and other related countries. Brazilians have a wealth of knowledge on restoration. They've been restoring land for about as long as China. We wanted to bring these two worlds of restoration experience together, and we thought the Beijing Forest Forum was the perfect platform to share that exchange. Well, you've seen and partners brought a delegation from Brazil to China to see on the ground some of the great examples of China in terms of large-scale restoration. We thought that this would be perfect timing and also bring the right expert from Brazil to really learn from the right expert from China. I think the examples in China in restoration are spectacular. The scale that they have been working on is something unheard of anywhere else. And their dedication and the seriousness they're taking this, it's amazing.
The Chinese colleagues can also learn from Brazilian experience how they manage the restoration activities starts from the ground, then end up at the national targets. Enquanto aqui na China uh, existe um foco muito grande para os serviços ecossistêmicos, no Brasil o foco é todo na conservação e restauração da biodiversidade. The strategy to implement more diverse forests to take care with the environmental services including not only water supply but also biodiversity. Pollinators, for example, could be important issues. You know, when it rains, the, the smell, the, 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 the same smell of a good soil. Oh. Having Brazilians on hand when we toured restoration sites and had detailed discussions on how do you structure your planting schedule, bringing trees in of different age classes at different times. Após essa viagem, eu me convenci que nós precisamos nos esforçar para trabalharmos a questão social dentro das frentes de restauração. Isso aqui a gente aprende com os chineses. Eles envolveram uma população grande, geraram emprego e renda adicional para as populações pobres de uma região que precisava disso. Não só o governo, mas os acadêmicos e a sociedade civil na China estão aprendendo sobre como fazer a restauração 2.0. Em Beijing, nós esperamos ver não só a restauração de escala grande, but restoration that's high quality, highly diverse. International Union for Conservation of Nature and our partners, the World Resources Institute and the Society for Ecological Restoration, we are fundamentally committed to achieving large-scale restoration of degraded and deforested lands across the world. One of the best ways we're going to achieve that is by bringing people together who have done it already in different ways and across different landscapes. To exchange the knowledge and experience with other countries is extremely important because the different country, they have different background, culture, and also problems. So through this platform, we could learn from each other. I really hope that what we planted this week here will really lead to a permanent exchange program, not only between Brazil and China, but also between Brazil, China and other countries to really have a much bigger impact on the long term.